Alright, All right, hello everyone. Hopefully you enjoyed some nice seafood, those oysters hit spot. We got Dr. Max Golhain here, who is an expert on light and health. So we're just gonna do like two 15 minute talks. Um, and yeah, I'll give the floor up for, for Max. And I'll be kind of walking around. If anyone hasn't seen the daylight computer yet, just wave me down. So here's Max. Thanks, Tristan. And thank you everyone for coming for a, a quite an impromptu uh, event. So great to see so many people here. I uh, wanted to share some thoughts from, I guess, a health point of view about why the daylight computer is, is such a useful tool and why I'm excited for it as, a, as a, something to be able to recommend and offer. And uh, I don't have any formal affiliation with daylight, and, but uh, I'm, I'm very excited for it. And I guess there's, there's lots of ways of thinking about the, the value that this has to society, but how I want to frame it for you today is this idea of the yin and yang of, of light and health. So does anyone, or can, maybe you can share with me any ideas that people have. Look, the concept of yin and yang, does anyone want to share with me their perspective or thought about what that, that necessarily means to them? Yeah, I mean, light and dark, this symbol, yin and yang. So any, anything else? Anyone else have any? Balance. Balance, that's a, that's a great word. So the way I, I think about it is that if you look at a yin and yang symbol, you have a symmetrically balanced light and, and dark cycle. And this is, uh, I think, a very important way of thinking about how light affects human health. So before humans even uh, essentially existed in our current primate form and, and prior to the even uh, evolution of, of mammals light and dark cycles were influencing health and influencing biology and the, the way to think about how uh, essentially uh, light how radically light has affected life is that we essentially evolved a mechanism of uh, adapting to the amazing difference in light, in, in energy, essentially, that is a present between day and night cycles. So, and I guess uh, another thing that really needs to be mentioned is how does the body recognize light? And there are, there are many different ways, but essentially we have a, a range of light-sensitive proteins, and these compounds essentially take photons and they change their conformation, and that triggers a cascade of signaling that therefore can influence how our body operates. The most dense location of these proteins exists in the retina of, of everyone's eyes. And that means that our, our eyes are, are our most sensitive organ to light and, and to the changing uh, light. So what happens is that the presence of light, particularly blue wavelength light, in the morning and throughout the day gets transmitted to the back of the eye and then all the way to the brain. And it influences a massive range of, of hormonal processes. So how is this relevant to, to the yin and yang of, of, uh, of light and, and health? Well, it basically means that your bodies are expecting and adapted to having bright, full spectrum sunlight during the day, and that, that's the white, and a complete absence of, of light, or almost complete absence and obviously uh, during the lunar cycle there is the presence of light at night but it is on the order of magnitude uh, much less than bright sunlight so what uh, to think about this, this daytime sunlight is it is profoundly different to any forms of artificial light that we are currently exposed to and what uh, we are currently using in the form of uh, LED bulbs in the form of compact fluorescent lamps, in the form of uh, LED and OLED displays. These are these are like alien suns, and they're emitting light that is profoundly confusing to to our, our biology and the way our bodies interpret and translate that light image, uh, light uh, information into into bodily functions and into management of of our body. So. Some characteristics of natural sunlight. Does, can anyone um, share with me their thoughts about what we need or what are some essential uh, 
features of natural sunlight? Yeah, so, so vitamin D, UV light, and it's UVB light that, that gives us vitamin D. So there's both basically, um, there's visible and non-visible aspects of this sunlight that we need. And the innovation that LED lighting has been was a, quite a arrogant innovation that presumed that we only need to visible light to see and operate. And artificial light as we are exposed to it is profoundly lacking in both ultraviolet and infrared. And those are two parts of the natural sunlight spectrum that we can't even see, but are having amazingly important um, effects on how our body operates. So uh, that is uh, one of the key aspects, is, is this non-visible light. And below visible is, is ultraviolet A, ultraviolet B, and visible light, and then above that is, is infrared. And more than half the photons, so the light that's actually hitting Earth, is not even visible. And when we're indoors, when we're when the when the doors are closed, when the this uh, low E uh, glass is blocking natural sunlight, then we're essentially sealing ourselves in these hermetic chambers, and we're putting these alien suns in on the roof of these uh, sealed chambers, and that is profoundly devoid of these nutrients, these light nutrients that we evolved over 3.4 billion years, and it's it's only been in the past. Uh, 100 years, 140 years since the invention of the electricity. So um, that yin and yang of, of light and health is, I think, one of the most useful ways of, of really thinking about light and, and the fact that every day um, you have an opportunity to either respect or, or disrespect these light needs. And that can start uh, in the first thing. You can either choose to walk outside and see bright sunlight and get that full spectrum, rich red and infrared rich sunlight into your eye and on your skin and um, trigger those, those photoreceptive uh, properties in your skin and your eye. Or you can stay indoors and you can pull your phone out and you can start scrolling on, on Facebook or Instagram uh, and you're gonna, th th that's the dichotomy, that's the fork in the road. And then throughout the day, you, you have the option of going out um, maybe with less, with, without your sleeves on or without a shirt on and getting that, checking in with the sun, getting that solar information, or you can stay indoors and, and obviously people work and it's difficult, but um, every day, every time we go on a break, every time we finish work or start work, we have an op opportunity to check in with the sun and either give our body that, that correct light signal that it craves or, or uh, expose it to this un unnatural light uh, signal. So, and um, I guess, the, the way then when we get home is th this, I guess, this opportunity continues and it's normal for most people to turn on the bright overhead LEDs in their office, in their, sorry, in their kitchen and exist under artificial light after the sun goes down. But um, that is itself having a profound negative effect and uh, particularly by its, its role in turning off melatonin, which is essentially amongst a range of other things uh, a protector of your mitochondrial colony, which are these, these little organelles that are making all your energy for you. And the, the more time that you spend on artificial light after the sun's gone down, the more difficult those mitochondria uh, time they have to make energy for you efficiently. And they're gonna break, and they do break as, as a consequence of natural living, and, and you're really preventing their repair when when we are under artificial light. So. So how does this tie into the daylight computer? Well, if you think about our relationship with technology in the daytime and the nighttime, it's really set up to, for us to fail and especially to disrespect these fundamental light needs. And what I mean by that is not only is the display emitting this confusing blue rich light that doesn't have any red, it doesn't have any uh, minimal infrared, but it, it's actually forcing us indoors. And that is because of the, the type of the display, meaning that we, it's difficult. We can't be outside grounded in the grass while we use modern technology. So the exciting thing about what daylight is doing is that uh, it's helping us respect both a more circadian appropriate uh, daytime routine and uh, a more nighttime routine. So it, it helps get us out of these indoor environments because you'd be able to use that technology uh, outside. 
and then when the night falls and the body is expecting zero light, then it makes it much easier to be productive and to live in the modern world while still respecting our circadian rhythms and not shutting off our, our body's melatonin production uh, with, with isolated blue light. So the, the takeaway point, uh, I guess, also which is what uh, everyone wants to hear, is that there's lots that you can do to really respect your body's light needs. And as I mentioned, seeing the sunrise, checking in with the sun throughout the day, avoiding the use of things like sunglasses early in the morning and walking on the beach lately, that is a uh, thing that, that, I, that I notice the most. And uh, even elderly people who probably need this light the most, uh, they're wearing sunglasses before UV has even arrived. And it, it isn't present in sunrise. And uh, that is a, the prime time to get that very important light information to help program your body and to help run everything efficiently and, and, and sort of working uh, properly. So avoid wearing these sunglasses, uh, in, especially in the early morning. Uh, use the shade rather than UV blocking sunscreens because that UVA and UVB are critical for generating things like nitric oxide to dilate your blood vessel, to relax your blood vessel, and uh, uh, help your blood flow properly. To generate vitamin D is, as we mentioned, to, to make melanin and um, the, the endorphins that UV light um, help release. So uh, avoid wearing those sunscreens. Use a shade if you are a fair skin type in Australia, and, and don't go out in the midday in high UV conditions if you don't have the, the melanin in your skin to, uh, to help uh, defend against that. And, and gradually build up exposure to full spectrum sunlight and without roasting, without burning. And, and that way you can harness all these health benefits and without turning into a raisin. Uh, and then finally, uh, overnight, wear something like, during the evening, wear blue lock blood blocking glasses. Turn your lights off as much as you can. Put uh, more red, orange, um, or even candlelight closer to the ground. So you're not tricking your body into thinking that it's noontime at the equator uh, and with the attendant consequences on your health. And obviously use something like a, a daylight if you have to use technology as, as a mitigating uh, measure at, at night. So I'm very optimistic and I'm very excited because this message about light and health is not one that's gonna come from uh, you know, the Australian Department of Health. It's not gonna come from uh, your, your, your GP. It's not gonna come from the World Health Organization in a coherent form. It's, it's really gonna come, I believe, fr from gra a grassroots movement, through self-education, through people like yourselves who are interested and curious and wanna do the best things by you and, and your family. And daylight is exciting because it is gonna be, I believe, one of the portals, one of the delivery mechanisms by which the, the wider world can potentially learn about the critical role of, of light and health. So uh, very exciting, it's a, gonna be a very exciting future. So yeah, uh, thanks to everyone for coming and uh, yeah, we'll be glad to uh, talk, talk to you and meet you all after this. But uh, yeah, everyone here is part of a movement. It's a very exciting movement and uh, I would encourage everyone to implement these things, learn more, talk about them to your friends and family. Um, and together I think uh, we can make a difference. So thank you very much. All right, thanks Max.